God, oh God, that we can run to you and we can know that in the fullness of your grace and in the power of your name, Lord, you can lift us up where we are in our pain, in our darkness, in our trials and in our situation. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Paul's ministry at Malta. Anybody found it? Now when they had escaped, they then found out that the island was called Malta. And the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to live. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But after they looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. In that region, there was an estate of the leading citizen of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and entertained us courteously for three days. And it happened after the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery, Paul went into him and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed. They also honored us in many ways, and when we departed, they provided such things as were necessary. Praise God. His word is blessed. But we're going to honor them this morning by saying, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, and is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. How many of you are ready for the word? Yes. Amen. And I'm so glad to have with us today yes. our pastor, Peter Staten. Amen. Amen. Such a good friend Amen. of mine. Amen. Amen. I have a saying sometimes. They say that people often say that a friend in need is a pet. But anyway, uh, Pastor Staten didn't consider me a pet when I was in need for him to come today. And that's a genuine friend when you are in need. Amen. They're there to be there for you. Amen. To help you. And I thank God for him. And we've been friends for a number of years. And Amen. He has been a truly good friend to me. And we've been able to talk and to encourage on one another. And I'm so glad to have him here today with us to lift up our hand in this um, very difficult time for us. And so without any further ado, I'm going to present to you the speaker for the day's London, Pastor Peter Stapleton, congregation. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are at my strength. No strength like no other. Amen. Amen. I give God praise this afternoon. Amen. Because God is good. Amen. Do you believe that today? God is good. Amen. It's so good to see so much of my wonderful friends and my condolences to the um, um, Blake Stroke Bruce family. Stavari. Amen. So sorry, sorry, sorry to hear. Amen. Of the passing of your mother. And it's 
you know, such a, a time. This the last between last year and this year, so many people have passed. So many, so many. But God is still good. Amen. Amen. In spite of all what's happening around us, God is still good. Amen. There was some said he lifted me up from the miry clay. He planted my feet on the rock to stay. And that is the reason why I sing and I shout. But when I was down, bless the Lord. He lifted me up. Amen. 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 I thank God. It's, you know, um, when Pastor Bruce phoned me, um, I said, if you can phone Overseer Vaughan and, and um, find out from him. Amen. Because I was due to be doing something at church this morning. And I said, okay, I'll come. I'll, I will come once it was arranged. And I thank God that I am here. Amen. As you know, that in December I had an operation. Mm -hmm. Amen. And God has been so good to me. Amen. In spite of them, I'm not only there yet, but I'm getting there. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. I've not preached since the last time I preached was the last Sunday in November since uh, before I went into the hospital. Oh. Amen. And God has been so good. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you this afternoon for your word. God, I thank you, Lord God, that you are here. God, we thank you, Lord God, that we can gather together. Lord, in this occasion, in this assembly, Lord God, look to lift up your name. God, you said in your word that uh, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I pray today, God, for an anointing, amen, to liberate the anointing to break the yokes, the anointing, God, to preach, the anointing, hallelujah, to speak your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, saturate this place today. Oh, come through the, the roof today. Come through the windows, run down the walls, come up through the floorboards and saturate our spirit. God, we long to be here from you. Spirit of the living God, I pray for the anointing today. Hallelujah! To break the yokes, to heal today, to deliver and set free. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Sometimes I like to sing, but you know. <laughs> when I think of the goodness of Jesus. Six. 
And then it says this at verse 3, King James Version. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper or a, uh, a snake or vermin out of the heat, fastened on his hands. And the, and the Bible says in verse 4, And when the barbarians, or the natives, saw the venomous beast and on his hand, they said amongst themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he escaped the storm, the sea, the shipwreck, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and yes. felt no harm. How be it? They looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God with a small g. Amen. Amen. The, the theme I want to bring to you this afternoon is crisis brings fresh opportunities. After an, an incredible a, a, an incredible year of unprecedented change, chaos and strife with a pandemic changing the world in more ways than one. From our lockdowns in our homes, schools are closed, businesses are closed, and even the church where we meet and worship God has altered our worship in many ways. We are wearing masks, we are, we are social distancing, we are doing all this. We cannot hug anymore, we cannot shake hands anymore, we cannot. The things that we are accustomed to, it seems that it's over. But I thank God that God, God is still the same. The Bible said he's the same God yesterday, today and forever. Crisis brings fresh opportunities. So when we understand about this, so we see that the church is in lockdown. And it's saying that even though I know a church um, uh, has not met from since March the 27th, they have not met at all. But they are meeting online, just as how this church meets online. And every Monday morning, Pastor Bruce sends out uh, uh, the WhatsApp message with a YouTube link to show yesterday's service or today's service. The Bible says that in the last days, knowledge shall increase. God praise. This, lockdown, this is a lockdown or this crisis is a fresh opportunity to give God the praise that he deserves. In spite of what is happening around, God gives us a fresh opportunity to do something good. And so what the Bible says that it says that this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world and the end shall become. Though we are coming right on to the end, this, this lockdown has caused many people to turn to God. This lockdown has caused many people to say, I am logging in to the service because I don't know what's happening around us. It seems that, that every crisis after a crisis, but I'm telling you this afternoon that Christ is in the crisis. Christ is in the crisis. We heard last week about the storm on the sea and Jesus was on the boat yes. and sometimes in our crisis it seems that Jesus is not there it seems that Jesus is asleep on our boat Jesus seems to be asleep on our crisis but Jesus is right there yes. in the midst of our crisis yes. whatever crisis you are going through yes. whatever situation you are going through Christ is there yes. in the crisis yes. and so when we understand that God is still the same in this time of crisis, what must we do? We must maintain our relationship with God. Yes. Yes. In crisis come, people say, oh, I'm giving up. You know, the world has a saying, stop the world, I want to get off. But we can't stop the world because the world, the Bible said the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Oh, I, 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 I can't cope anymore. But God has given us that we must maintain that relationship with him. Yeah. Even though those are Jones, even though he slay me, yeah. yet still will I follow. Yeah. We've got to still follow on to Christ. The Bible once so right said, Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? 
There comes a time, he said, where though the billows rage, and so the winds of flight, he said, we have an anchor that keeps the soul. The anchor is Jesus Christ. The harbor is Jesus Christ. We can shelter in the harbor. We can shelter while the storm is going on. While the storms of life is raging, God wants you to stand with him. We've got to stand in these days. Many people are giving up and giving in and said, I can't cope anymore. It seems that we've got a crisis on our hands. But I'm sure I show you this um, this afternoon that God is omnipresent, meaning that He's there, there and everywhere. The psalm says, is, you know, God's presence is right now and right here. Yes. Psalms 139 and verse 7 says, Whether shall I flee from your presence? He said, Whether shall I go from your spirit? Whether I take the wings of the morning and go to the uttermost part of the earth, behold, thou art there. Even when you're on the mountaintop, God is there. Even in your valleys, God is there. Even when in your lockdown situation, God is there. Even when your children are giving trouble, God is there. Even when you're lining up at the shop, God is there. Even when death is at your door, God is there. Even when you don't know, I have no money left. God is there. Even when you are tossing and turning at night, God is there. Even when you're in the hospital, God is there. He's there. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Oh, some people got fair weather friends. Oh, when the going is good, they're there. But when the crisis comes, they're off. Many people are like Job's wife. When the crisis comes, when the situation, she said, curse God and give up. But I'm telling this afternoon, the crisis brings fresh opportunities. Oh, even though it might seem that you don't know your way out, you might be going for a health crisis. You might be going for a moral crisis. You might be going through a financial crisis. Some people are going through an identity crisis. Many people are going through a relationship crisis, or even on this Valentine's Day, a mental health crisis, political crisis, unemployment crisis, and some people have a spiritual crisis. Where is God when I am down in my utmost? Where is God when I say I don't feel Him because I, I'm in my problem? And sometimes we make our problems bigger than God. God is bigger than our problems. You've got to turn to that mountain and say, Be thou removed. Where is your faith in the crisis? We saw that Peter turned to Jesus and said, Master, care us out not that we perish. Many times when we're going through our situation, people say, Oh my God, just give up. Give up, give up. No, it is time to stay with God. Yeah. To stay with God, even when it seems that, that your boat is being rocked. Amen. When your body is rocked with pain. Yeah. When there's no one else to turn to. Yeah. Even if, when the, all your friends have walked out on you. Even when your job gives you a, 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 a redundant note to put you on further, put you out or whatever. God is still God. He will make a way when there seems to be no way. Let's give the Lord a praise. Amen. We've got to remember that a crisis is an opportunity for God to demonstrate his power on your behalf. Without the crisis, you won't know how good God is. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember um, going to the hospital in December. And because of cri uh, coronavirus, I was under Bedford. Then I was put under Cambridge Hospital. And they said to me, for Bedford was messing me around for a year. Yeah. And when then my results came in, by the September and by the December, Cambridge Hospital said, we've got to do a work on you. Two, after two days in hospital, they left me because of the coronavirus, said, you can't stay there anymore. Mm -hmm. I walked out with a catheter bag, come to me walk, a bag full of needles, 40 needles. Every day I had to inject myself. Mm -hmm. Every day. And, the, you know, on the 15th day, it got, because I ain't got nowhere else to put the needle one side and the other side and one side, until it was a, until it was hurting so much and, and it was my wife every morning I had, she had to put the needle because I couldn't do it myself every needle I had to inject myself and I said God where are you 
and it was seen it was dark but I know that after the 38 days I know that I was only two needles left <laughs> I hit one of the needles and then Sharon said to me but there's one more needle I'm sure there is one more needle <laughs> And I said, yes, it's hidden under here. <laughs> because every day, it was painful. And sometimes in your crisis, it's painful. In your situation, you want to give up. But you've got to take the course. If I need to do well, I have got to take the pain. The short-term pain for long-term gain. And sometimes God will have to take you through this pain for you to, to come through as pure God. God has got to take you through your obstacles. God has got to take you through your valleys. God has got to take you over your mountains that you can see the blessings of God. God has got to take you that your enemies come against you. That they can flee seven ways. I'm telling you, that God be for you. Who can be against you? It is time for the church to realize that there's fresh opportunities. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Fresh opportunities. Amen. Fresh opportunities. I'm not meaning still. When something is fresh, you can taste it. When something is fresh, you can smell it. When something is fresh, you can handle it. When something is fresh, you can see it for yourself. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Even in the bad time, God is still good. Even when death is at your door, God is still good. Even when you're walking from the shadow, the one in the shadow of death, God is still good. Even when you can't find your way out, God is still good. Hallelujah. So every crisis gives us an opportunity to extend our faith and to build our trust in God. Oh, just as how many theologians say that Job was the first book that was ever written, written by Moses. And Job is a real life example for all of us. That crisis brings fresh opportunities. And in chapter 1, we see how Job was a good man and a godly man. And Satan went to God and said, I'm going to give Job a number of crises. And we saw how the, uh, after one crisis, before one messenger even finished speaking, another messenger come and said, the animals have gone. The, the, this has gone your house has fallen down on your children. All your children are dead. Everything. And Job was on the, the verge of giving up. And sometimes in your crisis, your dearest and your nearest are the ones who said, give up. His wife said, curse God and died. And then when the, his friends, his three friends heard that Job was in a crisis, they all turned up and said, Job, you had sinned. And sometimes God has to take us through a crisis yeah. that people don't understand where God is taking you. Yeah. You've got to go through this crisis to prove God for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to go through crisis to understand that your mother's faith is not your faith. Yeah. You've got to learn how to pray yourself. Yeah. One thing I learned, my mother prayer warrior. I saw my mom praying every day. And I, I heard she prayed for all the five children. She prayed for all of my, uh, my five siblings and the whole got saved. And I didn't understand the value of praying until I got older. Realized I couldn't, uh, when I left home, I could not really, I had to phone up my mom many times and said, pray for me, can you pray for me? But there comes a time when mom is not there. Yeah. When your friend is not there, yeah. when the person you're relying on is not there, you've got to learn to pray to yourself. You've got to learn to hold on to that altar and say, God, it's me again, God. I've got an, a, an answer. I need a, need a prayer that you can answer. It's me again, God. I've got a problem that only you can solve. I don't need to worry you, but all I want is something new. All I want is the Holy Ghost. It's me again God and sometimes we've got to hold on to the altar of prayer in your crisis and say it's me again God even if it's tears rolling down your eyes even when you're banging your head and say God I cannot see my way through there's a fresh 
opportunity in your crisis is a fresh opportunity to come with, to come to communicate with God. It's a fresh understanding to walk with God because God is still walking with you even in your crisis. And so Job's friends. They came and they saw Job and they began to say all kinds of things. But in the end, in Job chapter 23 and verse 10, he said, he knows the way that I take. When I've been tried, I shall come forth as pure gold. When God has tried you, you shall come forth with a song. When God tries you, you shall come forth with a testimony. When God tries you, you shall come forth in victory. When God tries you, you shall come forth as triumphant, more than conquerors. Hallelujah. And the Bible says at the end, in Job chapter 42, he said, and so the Lord blessed Job better than at his beginning. Yes. He had double for your trouble. Yes. In your crisis, God is going to give double for your trouble. Yes. You can't turn to your neighbor, it's not to your neighbor. <laughs> there's better ahead. Yes. There is better ahead. After this, yes. there's going to be victory after this. Yes. There shall be glory after this. There shall be an anointing after this. There's going to be a breakthrough after this. There's going to be a love after this. There's going to be a victory after this. Ah, you might be going through this situation and say, but God, oh, we've been locked down, shut in, all kind of things for a year now. But I'm telling you, there's going to be victory after this. There's going to be dancing after this. Hallelujah. There's going to be hope after this. There's going to be salvation after this. There's going to be the anointing after this. When you've been tried, you shall come forth as pure gold. God wants to try you. God wants to test you. Ah, are you willing to have the test? Are you willing? Crisis brings fresh opportunities. So Paul understood very well about crisis. He understood and he wrote many times about the trouble that he had faced. And if you turn your Bibles very quickly to second, I slow down, second Corinthians chapter 11. Chapter 11, when we talk about some crises that Paul had to face. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians chapter and sometimes we think that our crises are many. Second mm -hmm. Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And he says, he was talking about his crisis. He said, in stripes above many. In prison, more frequent. Mm -hmm. In death, often. Yeah. Of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, mm -hmm. save one. Verse 25, he said, twice I was beaten with rods. Three times. Twice, three times. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I, was sh I suffered shipwreck. And night and a day I've been on the sea. He says, in journeys, then he begins to lay them out. He begins to, he calls these crises perils. Yeah. He says, in perils, he said, in, he said when he talks about, in, in, it's in journey often, in perils of in water, yeah. in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, yes. in perils by heathens, in perils in the city. In perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea. Then he went and said, In perils even in the church. So Paul was laying out all these. Then he goes on to say, After the perils, he says, In weariness and in painlessness, in watching after, in hunger and in thirst. 
in fastings, often cold and nakedness. All these crises that Brother Paul says, these things don't move me. Oh, uh, when he understood all these crises that you've got to go through, he said none of these things. Acts chapter 20 verse 24, that was Paul's testimony after talking about all the crises, all the perils. He says, but none of these things move me, neither I count my life dear unto myself, that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I received of the Lord Jesus Christ to testify of the glory, hallelujah, of the gospel of the grace of God. Oh, none of these things, perils, none of these things move me. Shipwreck, none of these things move me. Oh, persecution, none of these things move me. Oh, situation that I come so, no, none of these things move me because I know that God is with me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. None of these things move me. Oh, I've got to move on. I've got to move on. I've got to move on because I don't want to waste your time this morning. So, but Paul then reminds us in the crowning chapter of Romans chapter 8. And Romans chapter 8 is one of those uh, go-to scriptures when you're going through your situations. And in Romans chapter 8 and verse 18, he says, you understand that your crises and your perils and your tribulations and your temptations and all these things, he says it's only for temporary. These things are only for a short time. In the great span of your life, Oh, tribulation might only last for, for a number of years, or a number of months, or a number of weeks, or a number of days. But there is a glory after this. Brother yeah. Paul says something here. He said, he reminded us uh, in, in Romans 8, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time Oh, I'm not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. When you go through, God wants to reveal his glory in you. Oh, your friends might understand. You might be going through today, but tomorrow God's going to bring you out. God's going to bring you out with a song. God's going to bring you out with a blessing. God's going to bring you out with a joy. God's going to bring you out with satisfaction. God's going to bring you out. Hallelujah to the nether level. Oh, after this, there's going to be glory after this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so for the poor, it reminds us in, in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 starts with something. I didn't want to go there, but I've got to go there. It's a crowning. It's a, in Romans chapter 8, it starts with, a, it, it said there's no condemnation. And it begins to, to, to talk about all oh, that we are the children of God. And it's one of the most, uh, in, uh, the most glorious thing I mean, to be led by the Spirit. And then, then he said, then it, about being joined ears. But then he says, who shall separate us? Who? Tell me who. Who shall separate us? Then he says, you know, when he talks about who shall separate us, then he talks about there's no condemnation. Then he said, then he, when he said who shall, shall separate us from the love of Christ, he said he made, begins to na name them like our names, the yes. perils. Yes. He then begins to name them again. He said, shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sakes we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But it said, nay, no. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Then it said, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, 
No principalities, no powers, no pre no things present, no things to come, no heights or death. Now any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. When all these things come to try us, is going God to stay connected to God? Is it not that none of these things separate us? Peril, famine, all nakedness, all these things. What shall separate us this morning from the love of Christ? Nothing. If a man that's gone through hell and back, to hell and back, can write these things, how much more? We've never been beaten, we've never been shipwrecked. We might, 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 might. <laughs> beaten by your parents. I mean, anybody else is beating you, call the police. <laughs> but from our text, as I'm coming down, because I need to finish now, we get a full understanding of the context of now in where Paul is. Paul in chapter 27, if you are to read it in chapter 25, 26, 20, and 27, we see Paul before, before Felix, before yes, Agrippa, all these things. And now in 27, Paul is, uh, was on uh, the uh, going towards Rome. Yes. And a storm came, and the storm was called Euro Calidum. Whatever your storm is called, this storm had a name. Mm -hmm. Small storms don't have a name, they only mention. Big storms. Yeah, true. Oracle and Hugo yeah. was Gilbert, what mashed up Jamaica in the yeah. 1980s. Yeah. They, don't, they don't mention the storms that did no damage. No. This storm, Paul was on the boat and it, it, it was, uh, they were locked down for two weeks. They saw neither sun nor moon, not nothing. And the, it got worse. The, the, the sailors tried to escape, and Paul said to them, If you abide on the ship, none of us shall be lost. And then came a time when the ship was wrecked. And Paul said to them, you shall make it even on broken pieces. Yeah. And now after they made it on broken pieces, they now reach land. After you've been, been locked down, ship, uh, um, uh, uh, this massive storm, the ship now is broken apart, they're landing on the land. And now Paul is now with the rest of the sailors and the prisoners. The people were nice and they said, we'll make you nice and comfortable. Then there's no hotel, so they're on the beach or wherever. So Paul, they started the fire, and as the fire was going down, Paul went uh, uh, in chains, he's a man in chains, he went and got some wood to put on the fire. And as the Bible says, as he picked up a stick and it was going to put uh, the, uh, the, the stick or the, the, uh, into the fire, a snake held onto his hands. And the snake held on, but Paul did something. He shook it off. There are many crises we've got to shake off. There's so many times serpents come in our life, but shake them off. There are some situations you've got to shake them off. There are some trials you've got to shake them off. There are some situations you've got to shake them off. There are some people you've got to shake them off. You gotta shake the devil off. You know, somebody said, shake, 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 shake the devil off. They shook off this venomous serpent into the fire. It shook it up. And the people know because they knew, the islanders know, this snake, this snake has killed many people before. This type of snake. So they're all standing around and saying, this man is a bad man. <laughs> he escaped a shipwreck, he escaped the storm, he escaped everything. Now he, when he reaches land, the judgment is still following him. Some people are so bad that when they go, trouble follow them. But Paul, no trouble was following him. Paul, sometimes you've got to shake off the trials, shake off the tribulation, shake off those things that are about you, shake off the chains, shake off sin, shake them off. And so he shook it off. So the people are standing around. Expecting him to die. Five minutes. He's still there. And sometimes your enemies are waiting for you to die. 
It's true. They're standing around watching Paul and saying, he should be dead by now. <laughs> then it says, they saw no swelling. They saw that he didn't drop down dead. I said, the attorney said, this man's a bad man. And the Bible said, they changed their mind. Yes. It said, you, even your enemies shall be at peace with you. There are some people expecting you not to come through this crisis. But in the name of Jesus Christ, you shall come through this crisis. In the name of Jesus. They didn't expect Paul to come through this crisis. They said, we went, this man is so bad. He escaped shipwreck, he escaped storm, he escaped, uh, he escaped all these things. And now, his sins have caught him up. So there's waiting. And sometimes people are waiting. But God has got a prize for them. You're still standing. In spite of what you've gone through, you're still standing. In spite of what, uh, what the enemy has spoken about you, you're still standing. In spite of all what's gone wrong in your life, you're still standing. They expected Paul to keel over and die, but he's still standing. Because greater is he that is in you than is he that is in the world. There's a greater anointing when you go through your trials. There's a greater power, hallelujah, that exists in you. And so Paul, the Bible says that after when they, they changed their mind, they said they began to worship and bow down and said, this man is a God with a little G. Because all what happened to him, even when the most venomous serpent has bit him, is still standing. Shake it off. Depression, shake it off. A pressure, shake it off. Children, problem, shake it off. Landlord, problem, shake it off. Work problem, shake it off. You gotta shake it off. And so, once they saw this, crisis brings fresh opportunities. Once they saw that it was a main man, father was sick. And Paul was. Uh, able to go to Pablo's house, he healed that man of uh, dysentery and what all and whatever. And then, when people on the highland heard, they came. The Bible says he was healing the sick, even in chains, even when, even when the in shipwreck, even when because when you on the shipwreck, you lose everything, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. everything. Everything, you lose everything. This man has lost everything, but he didn't lost God. And he was able to, he had lost the anointing, he was healing the sick. He was doing all these things. And I'm saying to you this afternoon, as I'm coming down, crisis brings fresh opportunity. True story. The story of a picture by, has everybody heard of a great painter called Picasso? Yeah. Picasso was a great uh, painter. And he had painted this picture called The Dream. And in, the, in, the 19, in 1997, uh, uh, there was a, a great art collector and, uh, in Las Vegas, and his name was Steve Wynn. And Steve Wynn was an art collector. And Steve Wynn had bought this uh, picture called The Dream for 48 million. He bought it for 48 million. And I think it was in 2005 or 2007, on the day he had sold the, the picture, now what he bought for 48 million, it now was going to sell it to somebody else for 100, 139 million. And on the day, the night before he had sold that picture, he called all his friends and his family and he was showing them and said, I have now sold this picture. And for the last time, I'm going to show you this picture, this dream. I'm gonna make I've made, made nearly I've made three times as much money or in four times as much money. And as uh, Steve Wynn had something wrong with his eyesight, even though he's a rich man, he had seen, and as he was showing the, the picture, this nice picture called the dream, he stepped back and and hit the picture accidentally. And the picture was now fell on the ground and it was torn. And now this picture was worthless. Yes, yes. And so this picture now was the dream was now shattered. It was worthless. 
And so and after a year, he could not, the buyers now said, we are not going to buy your picture, the dream now, for 139 million, it's now worth nothing. But a year later, his wife saw that picture, that battered, broken picture. And she went to an art historian. And as she went to the art historian, the art historian worked on that picture. And as they worked on the picture, the picture became better than what she had. And the, 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 when the, the, the man, Steve Wynn, saw the picture, he went back to the, 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 the buyers and said, you know that picture that I, I was broken, you saw that it was torn, battered or whatever. It's now been restored. And it said, can we negotiate a price? And they didn't negotiate a price of 48 million. They did not negotiate a price of 139 million, what they negotiated previously. They negotiated a price of 155 million. Whoa. How much more, as I'm closing, we were that picture. We were marred by sin. Broken by sin as children of Adam. But I thank God that Jesus is not only into restoring pictures, is into restoring people. God took the picture, that broken picture of your life. That broken picture of broken relationships. That broken picture of failed everything. That broken picture what people had said you're worthless. But God took that picture. And God, through his blood on Calvary, that blood on Calvary, he gave new hope to that picture. He gave new hope to me that was battered and bruised. He gave me a new life. That life was not worth nothing. It's now worth something because of the blood. I'm telling this afternoon, Crisis brings fresh opportunities. God wants to take that broken piece of your life. That crisis ridden pieces of your life and make something new. Just like the dream. The dream that was bought for 48 million. Which was to be sold for 139 million. Was now worth 155 million. God will take your life what worth nothing and make it something. My friend today, you might be going through a crisis, but I'm telling you this afternoon as I'm closing, crisis brings fresh opportunities. My friend this afternoon, I'm speaking to those on the camera today, whether in England, whether in America, whether you're in India, whether in, in Jamaica, wherever you might be, whether in, you're in Dominica, whether in, you're in Grenada, whether in Antigua, whatever place you might come from. Today, God is saying this fresh crisis brings fresh opportunities. Your crises ain't going to kill you. Your crises are only a temporary stop back for greater things. If you don't know Jesus today, God is into making something new. Today, if you don't know Jesus, Today, if you're sick, today, if you're wounded, if you're healed, whatever is your need today, Jesus is in the businesses, is in the business of making all things new. God bless you.
today none of us has been through what Paul has been through and yet he said what shall separate me from the love of God despite all the perils despite being on the sea for a whole night despite being beaten despite being whipped by being naked he said what shall separate me from the love of God and that encouraged us to say, you know something, what you're going through is minor compared to what others have gone through. And they still held out and still gave God the praise in the midst of their crisis. I'm going to ask Pastor Peter to come back and to pray and to remember our family in prayer as we go through this uh, very difficult time. I receive what he has said that we're going to receive double for our trouble. I mean, I'm expecting a double portion of anointing. I'm expecting a double portion for what we have been through the past year. has been a very trying year. Amen. But we believe that God is going to bless us. And he sent his, his man to give us a word. That despite what we're going through. When we look when they, they said uh, Paul, they were expecting Paul to die. Believing that his, his ways had caught up with him. And they probably said you escaped the shipwreck and you escaped this. But you didn't escape the serpent. But God proved that he's still God. Yeah. And despite what people were thinking, amen, God was able to bring him through. And so we know that regardless of what people said, and those same people who are putting you down, when they see the manifestation of God, they will change their mind. Amen. Because they'll realize that God must be with you, Pastor Stapleton. I am the Lord that he led me. I am the Lord your healer. You sent your word. Father, we thank you this afternoon. God, we thank you for this church, Lord God, as we have seen, Lord God, throughout the last two years, many crises and situations, Lord God, have come, Lord God, to, and storms have come, Lord God, to shipwreck this, your people, Lord God. But I thank you, Lord God, that in spite of what is happening around them, they're still standing. Lord, in spite of death, Lord God, in spite of illnesses, Lord God, in spite of shutdown, in spite of, Lord God, oh, Lord, in, in spite of all that is going on, God is still doing a work. Father, I pray right now, Lord Jesus, for the bereaved families. God, I pray, Lord, that you're a great consolator. God, you're a great comforter. I pray right now, God, for the Blake family at this time. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that... Lord God, for the spirit of comfort, the spirit of unity, the spirit of understanding. God, sometimes we don't know, Lord, why things happen. But as the song writes, it, further along, we'll know all about it. Further along, we'll understand why. Cheer up my brother, cheer up my sister, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Father, I pray right now, Jesus. God, that you'll reach out your hands, Lord of mercy. God, I pray your comfort. God, I pray, Lord Jesus. Uh, God, as you, Lord, you are what the one, Lord Jesus, that uh, said that, uh, Lord Jesus, that uh, at Lazarus' tomb is only sleeping. God, and said that he is the resurrection and the life. I pray today, God, I thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, that Sister Blake, Lord God, knew you as her Lord and Savior. God, we know, Lord God, she's gone to a better place. I thank God, Lord God, that her suffering is over. God, she's in the presence of the Lord. I pray right now, Lord God, for her husband, Lord God, her children, or the rest of the family. I pray in the name of Jesus. Reach forth your hands for those who are not saved in that family. God, may this be a means of, Lord God, of them coming to know you. God, if they want to see their mother again, if they want to see their grandmother again, God, they've got to give their life to the Lord. I pray today, God, for the spirit of comfort on this church. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you'll meet every need. God, meet needs today. Meet financial needs. Meet relationship needs. God, meet the Lord God job needs. God, I pray in the name of Jesus. 
I speak healing. I speak deliverance. I speak breakthroughs today. In the name of Jesus, stretch forth your mighty hand. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch, revive, restore, but more than all, save by your power. God, I pray, God, for revival in this church. I pray for a revival in this town. Spirit of the living God, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, after the lockdown, people will run into this place and say, truly, God is in this place. I pray, God, that your God, you set your people, Lord God, in order. God, put those things in order because, God, you're sending an influx of people. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that we will lay aside everything every way and say that so easily be settled because you're going to do a new thing. God, you're doing something great. You're doing something mighty in this place. And we give you the glory and we give you the praise and we give you the everything that's due to your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.